What's up guys? I'm Mari with The Fun Network and on this episode of Behind the Bumpers, I'm with 10,014 Rebellion. We're currently here at the Houston event in the First in Texas district and I'm here with Eli, Aaron, and Taha to show off their robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Okay, starting things off, I've noticed that you guys have a bit of a ground intake as well as one that people can drop off from the human player station. Can you tell me a little bit about your design? So the human player station uh, drop off is really redundancy because we've had our uh, ground intake break a couple times. But to pick up the coral, the ground intake fl flips down with a four bar mechanism, and oh yeah, and. These wheels spin at a relatively fast pace, just uh, hucking it <laughs> through the mechanism. And it passes it off to the indexer, which has uh, three star wheels. Two of them are for redirecting, and the third one is to uh, push the coral further into the farm. I noticed that you have a pair of safety shields on your robot near some gears. Can you explain how that led to be? So uh, we were having some issues because the coral was hitting those gears. So we just found a circular object <laughs> that just that we just zip tied on and it works surprisingly well. Very interesting. I love that as a solution for a rookie group that is so innovative. Now, I would like to hear more about y'all's intake claw. What is? Uh, I don't even. For that, know what I'll to hand it off to Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm not even sure what myself to call it. It's like so many things so all in one. So we call it our wrist. Um, so it has a pretty high gear reduction. It's about. 120 to one. So I can't, I can barely move it manually. Um, so after our last event, we decided that what we had wasn't gonna work. We were, we needed to change the direction that we were uh, pivoting our claw um, because we had to reorient the game piece far too much. So instead we decided that the best course of action is to have the coral be per perpendicular and just come in much easier. It used to be over here and it was a whole mess. So uh, we decided to go here. We have a little 40 tooth gear that transfers the rotation from the pivot to a encoder. And that's how we know what the rotation of our claw is. Um, and this mechanism allows us to even go backwards with our claw and uh, we've been using it in auto. So what it does is, oh, enable. If it goes like this, for L4, we can do a backward score. Uh, and it allows us to get potentially three pieces without having to turn around anywhere near as much as we would otherwise. Because of course, our intake is on the opposite side of our scoring mechanism. Additionally, While uh, we were designing this, we decided that we should make it so that we can pick up uh, coral off the ground uh, straight up for autonomous. Um, and so we have this long arm. And... So all of this is on a fully custom elevator as well. Um, 
all these parts were machined to be basically as simple as possible uh, with very few axes of motion. It's just basically it's a bunch of plates to, to make the elevator. That's very cool. Have you guys experienced any issues with your elevator? Or so has it been running pretty well? The main issue we've had is just how much it's wobbling. So when it's up high, there's a lot of play. So, oop, wrong way. So when it's all the way up here, has quite a bit of play. So uh, we've been experimenting with reducing that play by uh, making new plates that have a little bit of a, they're just a bit further out to try and get rid of the excess tolerance. It's very interesting. Speaking of your elevator, I've noticed that you guys are so quick to get from picking it up from the ground to up to your fourth level without any issue whatsoever. Can you talk to us a little about those presets and oh. that kind of thing? Okay, yeah, so we use just a normal profile PID controller. We used the external one since the rev ones weren't working for us. Um, we use the button board to go from L1, L2, L3, and L4. These are all autonomous, while this one gives us manual control just in case if anything goes wrong or you know something happens within the pit. This we just we score with this. Um, it'll just um, angle the wrist down and go down. Uh, we can also, of course, some more manual control. We can uh, shoot here. We can descore the algae, stuff like that. Um, as for our autons, we have. Uh, path planner. Um, we have quite a couple paths. So we have a naming scheme for our different paths. And um, here is one of our most, um, the one that we're using currently. Uh, it uses the, the reverse scoring like how uh, Aaron said. And it also picks up just like how the claw is right now with the center coral. Um, all these paths are natively made of path planner, but we use a Lagrangey characterization of the bot, same with the Newtonian one, in order to optimize the paths. And that's what makes us so consistent and align uh, perfectly every time. I'm assuming that those four uh, little blocks on there are both, are both your swerve modules as well as these cameras that you have on, every, on top of every single one of them. Oh yeah, so yeah, these are our swerve modules. Camera. For our cameras, they have been optimized for our autons, the angles. Um, they all run off an orange pie, two orange pies actually, which we plan to use object detection soon with. And they'll bo they both use photon vision. And um, yeah, we just calibrate them. They're just very simple cameras. They just report the data and um, they adjust the odometry based off that to interpolate where our pose is. That's incredible. Now, I remember Aaron mentioned something earlier about having earlier iterations of your design from a competition prior that it kind of worked, but it wasn't really up to the standard that you guys were hoping for. I was hoping that you guys could show me a little bit about them and talk a little bit. For the old design, we decided that we wanted one claw for both uh, elements and we, for barge, we decided to have two 18 pound gas struts that like propel the algae out and this opens and it's compliant for the algae as well as for the coral and before the uh, be before the design change we actually had to have another subsystem it's I call it the funnel, and it takes the uh, the coral and directs it with these wheels into the same position every time. And another thing that we like to do when designing is we like to make all of our subsystems modular so that this entire subsystem took four screws to completely take out and replace with the new design. I really do like that for you guys. It makes it so that as you grow throughout this competition, your robot can grow just as easily. 
I have thoroughly enjoyed this and I look forward to the rest of you guys' event. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at Altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to Altair.com slash contest for further details. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.